welcome to our first Knowing Life video. My name is Matt Taylor. I work here at St. Nicholas in Seven Oaks. It's lovely to have you um, with us. All you'll need is in the video itself, so any reference to a Bible verse will pop up on the screen. Um, but if you'd like to read through um, John's account of Jesus's life, there is a link in the description um, below. At the end of the video, there'll be an opportunity to chat about what we've heard. Um, do click pause at the appropriate uh, time. If you do have any feedback or questions, I'd love to hear from you. My email address is below as well. Our next video will premiere next Monday at 8 p.m. Um, but if you can't make it at that time, please just use it at any time. It will be up on our YouTube channel. Here's Angus with our first talk. Let me take you to a desperately sad scene painted by Mike Kane in his book, Real Life Jesus. Uh, he paints the picture of a whale stranded on a beach. It's alive, breathing, groaning, uh, twitching its fin, but things aren't right. He says, the whale was made for the ocean. The ocean is the environment in which it is free to be a whale, to swim, to leap, to sing, to dive down deep a thousand metres into the dark depths and catch squid with its built-in sonar. It's an awesome creature. On the beach, you can still see something of its power and its beauty, but your admiration is mixed with sadness. As it thrashes its tail helplessly, as it lies there limp and wheezing, you know that this was not the life it was created for. There's something very poignant about that scene, and it reflects something about our human condition. You see, so many of us know that the life we are currently living falls so far short of what we were longing for. We feel stranded, at longing for the life we were made for, and yet helpless to reach it. Let me go to the same author again. He says, the Bible teaches that as the whale was made for the ocean, men and women were made for God. He created us to enjoy his love and to reflect his ways on earth. Our relationship with him, as it were, the environment in which we are free to be fully human. But as the whale has, has crashed out of the ocean, humankind has walked out on God. We thought that it would set us free, but it has left us stranded on the beach. Like the whale on the beach, we are noble creatures, but we cannot reflect on our beauty without a sense of sadness. Now, the aim of these short video messages is to reconnect us with the ocean, to enable us to know the vastness of God's love, so that we can experience life with God as it was always supposed to be. To do that, we're going to head into the part of the Bible called John's Gospel in the New Testament. And I'm going to focus on three short sections which all speak about life, where it comes from, how we receive it, and what it's all about. Our first heading is the source of life. I'm going to read the first little section of this book, John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. A little later it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. So we, as we piece things together, we're being told that the word, Jesus himself, is the creator. He is the one who gives us life and light. Perhaps in your mind, think of one candle, a light in the darkness, which lights up another light, and then another, 
Jesus is the light of the world. He is the only one who can give life and light. It's an outstanding claim which John is making about Jesus. Perhaps we're used to thinking of Jesus as the baby in the manger or the man dying on a cross. But John wants to take us right back to before the very beginning. And he wants us to lift our eyes to look at everything around us. It's all made by Jesus. And we ourselves owe our creation to Jesus. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Jesus is the one who has given life to everything, including ourselves. He is the source of life. Our second heading is that Jesus is the key to life. Now we're going to the very end of John's Gospel. Jesus performed many other signs, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. We're told that life comes from believing. But what does John mean by believing? Well, it's all about putting your trust in something or someone. Or perhaps better, it's about putting your confidence in something or someone. Of course, you can't have confidence in someone until you know something about them. That's true whether it's an online transaction or following your doctor's advice. The more you know about them, the greater your confidence or trust. But how can we find out whether Jesus is trustworthy? Well, the Gospel and Count includes a record of what Jesus did, which includes his miracles, which are described as being like signposts, pointing to who Jesus really is. It's good to have a reliable signpost, and even better to arrive at where the signpost points. So John has provided us with all the information we need in his gospel so that we can put our confidence in Jesus. And once you see who Jesus is in the Bible, then you can put your confidence in him. And as you do that, you will just discover the life which he offers. In other words, Jesus and the account we find of him in the Bible is the key which helps us to discover life. Our third heading is the heart of life. Then at a significant moment in Jesus's life, he explains what is at the heart of life. He says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You see, real life is all about being in a relationship with someone else. We weren't created to be completely on our own. What a difference real friendship offers, where we know someone and they know us, where there is acceptance and kindness, honesty and openness. Uh, what a difference marriage makes where there is mutual love and respect, joy and laughter, security and pleasure. And these are all tiny foretastes of the relationship which we were made for with God, which we discover as we come to know Jesus as our Lord and as our Saviour. As we conclude, let's go back to the whale on the beach. That's not life as it should be. But so many of, for so many of us, that's our experience. Somehow amidst the busyness of life and work and family and social media and COVID restrictions, we find ourselves stranded, at longing for the life that we were made for. Well, as we come to a, a close, let me return to that book, Real Life Jesus. The author says, 
If there is no ocean, then the whale's experience of the beach is not a problem. It's just how things are. Similarly, if there is no God, then our experience of sadness is not a problem. It's just how things are. If life is just the result of a cosmic roll of the dice, then laughter and tears are neither good nor bad. But you see, there is a nation. And so that's where the whale needs to be to find life and purpose and freedom. And there is a God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who offers us each life in all its fullness. And as we discover more about Jesus, and as we come to him, we will also find life and purpose and freedom. My hope is that you will join us in watching this short series of videos in the coming weeks, and that you will want to take a look for yourself at John's Gospel in order to discover more about the Lord Jesus, the key to life. As you reflect on these things, I've got three questions that you might want to consider, uh, perhaps with a friend or perhaps on your own. Question number one. In what sort of situations have you felt there must be more to life than this? Question two. What are the key things which have been pointed out about Jesus? And what do you make of these claims? And then question three. According to John chapter 20, and then little number 31, what is the way to build confidence in Jesus? And how could you start doing that this week?